Hello friends, welcome back to another awesome day. In our school community, we got so many requests that please make a video on that what is the exact difference between a quant researcher and a quant developer, right? So today, in this session, we will discuss about the exact difference between the quant researcher and a quant developer. And also, we will study, we will learn that what subjects and what topics you need to do in order to uh, you know get a job in the quant developer or a quant researcher so without a further ado let's get started so we have this comparison table between the quant researcher and the quant developer so let's start discussing this but before that let me uh, tell you something that we have this school community very awesome school community where we discuss all kind of strategies all kind of you know any issues if anyone having they post in this community and everyone who is having the knowledge to share they respond on that but even if you want you can directly ping me in the school community and i will respond to that uh, message right and also if you are a beginner then i would highly recommend you to go through this book this is a very awesome book practical python for effective algorithmic trading it will clear all your basics if you are a beginner and you do not have any motivation or, or any inspiration then definitely you should go through this book this book has so many stories, so many mistakes that have been previously made in the algorithmic field. So, you know, it will inspire you for sure. And also it covers the basic details of Python and how to implement those basic concepts of Python in the algorithmic trading. So it will at least give you a head start and then you can move on to the advanced parts. So definitely it's a highly recommended book. So you can go through this. So if you want the ebook, you can directly download it from the school community. Just click on this classroom and you can download this the first ebook and you can you know just read it it's a very quick read you can finish this in just one week so yeah and if you want the uh, some people are fond of the paperback right the hard hard print so for that you can click on the links so for the ebook just click on this link and and for the paperback you can click on uh, this link right so let's discuss about the primary role of a quant researcher so in this develop mathematical models for trading strategies which means uh, you should be having a very good understanding of mathematics right all the concepts which we will discuss in the in the later part of this video right then we have to find the new alpha source and signals which means the main work of a researcher is to you know always uh, perform hit and trial on different uh, mathematical models and different strategies and whenever you find a new alpha or a new strategy how you can maximize your profit for the company then that is the main work of a quant researcher and also statistical analysis of the market data then hypothesis testing and validation and also intellectual discovery and innovation which means you always you know work on the new things new uh, new strategies or, or you always uh, read the research papers which have been published in the quant field and also the other fields let's say the machine learning field so you always have to you know research about the new uh, strategies or the new techniques which can be implemented ultimately by the uh, developers right so then when we talk about developers so they build and maintain trading system so let's say they research and then they you know communicate with the developers so then they have to build and maintain these systems right and implement models in production environments so the researchers they you know research on that uh, particular strategy then after the communication they implement that model in the product environments right then optimize system performance and latency which means let's say system means uh, your uh, trading programs your algorithms and also the uh, latency is it means the execution time between the your server and the exchange server right so it can be in, the, in multiple ways it can be done by, by the optimization of the, your code or algorithm and also the hardware you are using the servers you are using which means uh, you know to optimize the network to optimize the os and to optimize like various things and also ensure system reliability and scalability right which means like you have uh, redundancy for each system like you have backups for each system so if even one uh, you know the primary node goes down you have the secondary nodes so like for everything you should be having you know uh, backup for the network you should be having backup for the servers you should be having backup for the applications so it has to be you know uh, like strategized and implemented by the developers then 
technical execution and delivery which means whatever you have been you know discuss with the researchers then you have to execute and implement in your uh, systems right then when you talk about the typical employers so generally the employers are almost you know common but when we talk about the researchers it is the hedge funds uh, prop trading and asset managers then for developers it can be in investment banks hft firms and hedge funds but basically these are common only right generally now uh, about the success metrics so if you are a researcher then your success or your performance will be you know based on these things which means the alpha generation the sharper ratio and the information ratio that how much you are able to improve these parameters then then again the research outputs means how many papers they are publishing and the models and the strategies right then statistical significance of findings which means let's say you have done some findings but what is the significance of those findings how much it is you know really uh, benefiting your uh, company in in that field particularly then again model performance or in live trading so once you have like uh, researched on a particular model or a strategy then you discuss with the you know other teams and after deployment how much it has you know uh, improved in your uh, like your company profits so it is based on that then again innovation and intellectual property creation so how much you have innovated for the company and how much ip you have created for your company so based on these things your success is defined then again when you talk about the developers it means the system performance the latency throughput and uptime which means that let's say you have a baseline then how much you are able to you know reduce the latency and then how much you are able to you know improve the throughput and the uptime let's say previously it was 98% then you are able to you know improve the uptime by 1% and now it is 99% right and again when we talk about latency it can be different for different companies uh, some are hft some are mft so how much you are able to you know improve the latency or we can say reduce the latency right then again code quality and maintainability which means how efficient you are able to write the code the quality of the code and how you are you know maintaining the code so generally we have many tools for the for that but uh, yeah that's also a parameter then again uh, it's again the uptime only then we have speed and delivery implementation speed and delivery which means how fast you are able to uh, implement or execute the things which have been discussed in your uh, with your various teams then again system scalability and efficiency which means like uh, let's say you have a trading strategy then how you are able to scale that uh, in multiple fields let's say you have a, a strategy for a crypto then if you are able to you know uh, scale that in all the other uh, fields let's say forex or the uh, traditional stocks then efficiency means uh, ultimately how efficient your uh, execution is so yeah so these are the basic difference uh, between uh, the quant developer and the quant researcher okay now we'll quickly discuss about the uh, subjects and the topics you have to you know uh, you have to be good to to get into this field right so and if you want this pdf uh, just click on the link below and you will be able to download this pdf uh, from the school community right okay now let's move to the next which is um, okay yeah i have already explained that yeah you can just go to the school community click on this link and or in the description you can join and you can you know download from these posts and uh, for the book also you will be finding the link uh, in below for the ebook and paperback for the ebook you will get discount if you download from the uh, school okay so now let's discuss about the core curriculum of the quant researcher so you will be able to download this uh, uh, pdf from the school community so let's discuss this quickly so for the quant researcher the first and foremost thing is the mathematics right in which you have to go through the linear algebra and matrix theory which means the vector spaces and uh, subspaces eigen values eigen vectors matrix decompositions uh, uh, pca then we have matrix norms and conditioning then the uh, positive def uh, definite uh, matrices then uh, of course we have this uh, multi variable calculus in which uh the derivative and gradients the chain rule uh, like these are basic only right but you have to be you know very good at understanding of these if you are a quant researcher then 
the uh, multiple in integrals and Jacobians, vector calculus, uh, Lagrange's and the uh, Taylor series. And then similarly, we have this real analysis and the optimization theory, right? And also the stochastic calculus. It is very important. Then we have statistics and probability. So in this, we have probability theory, then statistical inference, then hypothesis testing and Bayesian statistics, right? So yeah, these are uh, common only. If you have already covered the data science course, then you must be having, you know, a good understanding of these uh, topics for sure. Then let's talk about the time series analysis. So this also has been covered in the data science uh, course. But if you want, you can let me know. We can start a fresh course for the quant researcher and quant developer. And you can let me know what else you need. So we can start that. So for the uh, time series analysis, we have the ARIMA models, then GACH models, uh, co-integration and the vector autoregression. And again, for the machine learning, of course, we have supervised learning, unsupervised learning, deep learning and reinforcement learning. And we'll, we are starting this uh, machine learning trading soon, as, as I have discussed already. So this will be uh, like, maybe by the next week, we'll start this, right? For the finance theory, we have the asset pricing models, uh, portfolio theory, derivative pricing and the market microstructure. So for this, actually, I'm not going to, you know, uh, spell all these things. You can download the PDF and you can uh, read out yourself or you can take a screenshot of this uh, uh, the, the screen. And also we have the risk management and the uh, finance, which is very important in trading. Okay, so when we talk about the research methods, we have the backtesting methodologies and the bias detection and correction statistical significance and performance attribution and also the alternative data analysis nowadays many companies are focusing on this thing so you have to you know a good understanding it will help you for sure then also we have the factor research so this was it for this quant researcher okay now let's talk about the quant developer role so in this of course you know that the first and foremost thing is the programming languages and for that the two languages are very much the c++ for the you know high speed trading and the python for the you know all the uh, research kind of thing so like by default you have to be very good in these two languages for sure but it depends on other uh, things also some companies you know uh, it based on the application so you if you have uh, you know basic understanding of java c hash and rust uh, is very you know uh, helpful for you but start with python and then c++ for the subtopics, you can download the PDF and you can go through that. Okay. Now, the next is the system design. This is also very important. And I have discussed, I have touched through uh, some topics in the previous videos uh, regarding the uh, system design. So in this, we have low latency systems. We have distributed computing and we have memory management, right? Because, because of this, you will be able to, you know, uh, improve the performance of your systems. So it is very critical. Then we have database management. So in this we have SQL databases, the NoSQL databases, uh, time series databases, and also database performance and scaling. So for this, what I would recommend you to, you know, pick any one database out of these. So let's say you can pick this one, PostgreSQL, and then uh, from the NoSQL databases, you can take any any. Let's say the MongoDB is used uh, a lot. And also nowadays, you know, Elasticsearch is also very much, uh, you know, popular. And for the cloud, you can go for the Amazon Neptune. And uh, for the time series databases, the KDB is also very important. So you can focus on that. Just, you know, don't worry about all these languages. Just start with something at least. And then you will see that you are able to, you know, cover all these things easily. Now we have the DevOps and infrastructure, which means you have to have a good understanding of this uh, topic. So the first is Linux and Unix system, which means, uh, let's say, Red Hat, CentOS, Ubuntu. Generally, you know, uh, in the companies, the, the most popular OS is Red Hat and also CentOS. Then uh, containerization. This is also very important. The Docker, Kubernetes, all those uh, things are very, you know, very, very important. and then the cloud platform. So for this, you can you know cover any one uh, any any one cloud. 
it can be uh, AWS, it can be Azure, it can be GCP. So just focus on any one and you know, if you do well in one, then definitely you'll be able to do the other also easily. Then CI, CD and automation. So like, you know, nowadays every company is using CI, CD automation, all the stuffs like the, you know, the, the tools, the Jenkins, GitLab, uh, Ansible for the configuration management system, and uh, for the monitoring, you can go for the ELK stack. And for the ELK stack, we will be covering this shortly. Uh, how to automate this thing. So we'll be, we'll be covering this for sure. And then for the security and compliance, you can you know go through these uh, things. These are important for the uh, quant devs. And then in the software engineering, we have design patterns, testing frameworks, then version control and collaboration, and code quality and architecture. This is also same, which we have discussed earlier. And then we have the financial markets and systems. So for this, we have OMS, order management systems, very important. Then execution algorithms, market data feeds, and trading infrastructure. And of course, you also have to have a good understanding of the mathematics and algorithms. So uh, the numerical methods, optimization algorithms, and the algorithm complexity and data structure. So this was it, like I know, there are so many topics which are, you know, which uh, overlap with each other. But you have to decide that in which role you want to go and just focus on that and you will be able to go through for sure. And if you need anything, if you need any, you know, any, any suggestions, you can let me know in the school community. I'll be happy to uh, answer that. And if you think that any other topic is, you know, needs to be covered, then we will also cover that. So, yeah. So for this session, it was it. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then. Bye-bye, take care, have an awesome day.